Battle Kid Fortress of Peril is a kind of game that brings the saying, don't judge a book by its cover to mind. When you look at it, you see a basic NES-styled platformer. There's nothing wrong with that, seeing as how plenty of games like that brought millions of people uncountable hours of entertainment, but for me, BK was like jumping onto a puddle and realizing it's steeper than it looks. To some that's great, and for the majority of the time that's the case for me as well, but BK is one of those games that tests my patience and takes me to the edge of my gaming abilities. I expected BK to be similar to the Mega Man games. There are some similarities there, but BK is like Mega Man on steroids. It's arguable whether or not the combat in BK offers less or more than Mega Man, but what's certain is that it's a game that keeps you on your toes. With retro and retro styled games, it's easy to assume that they'll be heavily pattern based. After a while you start to get a false sense of confidence, and as if it'll be smooth sailing because of what you've managed to previously accomplish. BK is the kind of game that pushes you until the final moment, but that's also seen from the start. I liked how it prevented you from getting too comfortable by making it so that each enemy didn't take the same number of hits to destroy. My experience with the classic Super Mario games makes it so that this was an assumption I had in mind during the beginning. Before long, I realized that though there are a few enemies that are encountered multiple times throughout the game, they're not always the same. An example that comes to mind involves a one-eyed enemy. Preconceived notions of what retro and retro-styled games are like had me thinking that I'd be able to shoot at it no matter what. I quickly realized I was wrong when I saw that this enemy didn't take damage when its eye was closed. This, along with some level design choices, spiced things up. Honestly, I'd say it's more than just being spiced up. BK takes simple concepts and makes them difficult by offering more than was expected. Sometimes it was because of enemy placement, obstacles, or different enemies in the same area. This forced me to have to think of multiple things at once. In hindsight, this is great game design, but in the moment, it was one of the many moments that left me feeling frustrated. On the topic of level design, obstacles, and enemy placement, it's worth noting that BK is more puzzle based than I initially thought it would be. I assumed it would be a retro running gun styled platformer, but like I've been saying, I eventually realized there was a lot more to it besides that. Having to deal with puzzles isn't difficult, but when you also include enemies, low health, and obstacles that can instant kill you, it's a lot to juggle at the same time. The puzzles were largely platform based. Whether it was having to figure out the timing for a platform that would disappear and then reappear, or knowing when slash where to jump in order to land safely. Speaking of jumping, in BK it's pretty responsive. I realize that bringing that up may not sound like much, but with a game such as BK and other retro platformers, how jumping feels and controls is of great importance. It's not only because it's a basic mechanic, but it also has to do with how that translates to other areas of a game. If jumping feels too tight, you have to spend time to get used to that. If it's too loose, you can end up overdoing it and dying as a result of overestimating things. The responsiveness of the jumping in BK was even more evident thanks to the introduction of power-ups that altered the jumping mechanic. You were eventually able to high jump or float down. These abilities not only allowed you to have more control in combat situations, but also when it came to platforming, completing puzzles, and overall movement in BK. After a while of playing and using these power-ups, you quickly realize how messy things could have easily turned. I might be making a mountain out of a molehill, but what I'm getting at is that it's because of BK's strong foundation with the jump ability that subsequent abilities and situations come off as well balanced as they do. Balance and knowing how to keep things fair throughout a game is something I've brought up in my reviews more than once. I'm not a speedrunner, but thanks to my experience as a gamer and desire to push things to the limit, I thought of ways to work around BK's limitations. What I mean is that BK's firing ability is very limited. It's easy to understand that it was made this way to ensure that it'd go hand in hand with the kind of game it wanted to be and how it wanted to play out. If you were able to endlessly fire, certain situations and possibly the overall game would be easier than they ended up being. Some may feel held back by this, but getting to the point where I realized that I needed all the help I could get forced me to get creative. I was trying to think of a workaround to the limited fire ability. I eventually discovered two ways to get around that. One wasn't as inefficient as the other, but the fact that I was still able to pull it off says a lot about BK and what it has to offer. Using the D-pad to slowly move forward made it so that I could shoot infinitely, or at least close to it. It made me vulnerable, but I was left thinking that this was still something worth having in my toolbox. The second workaround involved firing and holding down the D-pad. It was more effective and I could shoot much faster, but the problem was that this could only be used in very limited scenarios. It's because BK is a game that forces you to always be moving and be thinking of your next move. It's not the kind of game that you can brute force your way through. There were moments where I intentionally took a hit or two if it meant being able to advance, but that wasn't always an option. 
I like that BK pushed me towards this direction because it made me realize that though it looks like a basic NES game, a lot of thought went into making it open-ended and so that multiple different play styles could be viable. That's one of the reasons why I enjoyed BK as much as I did. There were multiple moments where I lost track of time and kept playing. As the saying goes, time flies when you're having fun. It also helps that it's easy to gauge how much progress you've made during a play session. Whether it be unlocking new abilities, reaching new areas, finding a new checkpoint, or beating a boss. The fact that I could tell when I was progressing made it so that I could stay motivated to keep at it. This also worked against you. There was more than one occasion where no matter how hard I tried, I wouldn't progress as much as I wanted to. It was mostly due to BK's difficulty. With most games, the difficulty is due to complicated boss fights, but with BK it was pretty much because of everything. Intricate platforming areas were one raw movement instant death, and generally having to overcome a lot with limited tools. Some of the bosses were easy to take care of and I could intuitively figure out what needed to be done, but that wasn't always the case. Towards the end of my time with BK, I started to hope that there really were only a limited number of bosses left because I didn't want to deal with being swerved. What I mean is that there are games that make use of multiple boss forms to ramp up the difficulty. Making it so that this comes off as fair is difficult. Sometimes it simply involves getting good, but other times it can be as simple as knowing an enemy's weak point. It's possible that I wasn't as attentive as I should have been during certain moments. The result being having to repeat boss fights or areas over and over again, for lengthy periods of time. To say that BK got me close to rage quitting more than once would be an understatement. What's worse was when I knew what needed to be done to overcome a boss, an obstacle, or an area. But actually pulling it off was the hard part. This is mainly in regards to the final boss, but there were plenty of moments where an area's obstacles made it damn near impossible to deal with. That's one of the reasons why BK offering as much as it does works for and against it. There was one moment in particular when listening to the music slash sound helped. There were these spiked blocks that would insta-kill you if you touched them. When I figured out the timing of the music slash sound, I started to feel more comfortable and was eventually able to overcome the situation. It even got to the point where I realized that I didn't have to rely on sound alone, but sight as well. I don't recall if it was in the same situation or at a later point, but there was more than one area that had insta-kill blocks that would come on and off. It was like a game of red light, green light, go. There were some moments where the timing was so quickly and precise that I had to think of new ways to deal with them. If I focused on the sound, I'd end up becoming distracted. What worked for me was not listening and relying on my sight. Since all I had to do was focus on what I did or didn't see, I was eventually able to overcome these stressful occasions more efficiently. BK had little ways of making the situations more manageable, but not to the point where you could say your hand was being held. I wanted to say that I don't know why I put up with this difficult game for as long as I did, but after having beaten the game, it's because at the end of the day it was still fun. Some people get enjoyment from challenging games, but I'm more towards the middle. I've beaten some games that have left me feeling like my cred as a player is higher due to having that on my resume, but that doesn't matter when it comes to games such as BK. I'm somewhat sure that I spent 10 hours trying to beat the final boss. It took me that long because of how many abilities it had and how durable it was. But I kept trying to beat it because I knew that it wasn't beyond my abilities. This is probably a long-winded way of saying that BK knew how to balance fun and challenge successfully. Even on normal, it felt like I was playing on very hard, but the fact that I was able to beat it shows that it's a fair game. There are some games that have forced me to throw the towel, but that's because I'm aware of my limitations. With some games, it's simply a matter of repetition, but with others, it's about reaching a skill level that's just beyond what I'm capable of. That'll probably be seen as a cop-out, but at the end of the day, I play games because I have fun doing so. When a game is no longer fun or something about it makes me want to move on, I'll do so. Years ago, I would have stuck to it until I managed to overcome whichever obstacle was in my way, but being older and having less time than before makes me want to make better decisions. Some may disagree with me deciding to leave coverage for a game as first impressions, previews, or a full review, but at the end of the day, chances are that someone out there will feel the same way that I do. It also helps that there's a countless number of games out there that may be a better fit for me. I'd rather find than play those than deciding to stubbornly stick to one simply to prove something to myself or to others. I'm sure I've gone off track with my review for BK, but I feel this is relevant to the experience I had with it and with other similar games. At the end of the day, Battle Kid Fortress of Peril is a game that has a lot to offer. Sometimes it was more than I expected, and that was both good and bad, but the fact that it does so is a good thing. Whether it was with platforming sections that required too much precision, or boss fights that were too long and complicated, I don't want to make it out to seem like all Battle Kid has to offer is difficulty, but I've dedicated the time I have to this because that affected my experience. 
It's possible that won't be the same for other players, but it is what it is. If you enjoy retro games with deep levels of gameplay, Battle Kid Fortress of Peril is the game for you. If you don't like challenging games that force you to overcome difficult obstacles, I'd say play something else. Either way, I'd still say give Battle Kid Fortress of Peril a try. Within an hour or so, you can tell whether or not it's for you. It's not only because of the art style that draws you in from the beginning, but also because it's the kind of open-ended game that has a lot to offer, no matter what kind of player you are. How do you feel about challenging games that push you to the limit of your abilities? Are you the kind of player that'll spend hour after hour trying to overcome one particular obstacle in a game? Has a basic looking game ever exceeded your expectations? If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, and if you're up for it, become a patron. Thank you very much for watching.